Welcome back to another retro review. This is a different world season three episode eight, right? Now listen, there were a couple of things in this episode that I'm gonna have to call you out on um different world, but y'all know I love you, so it is what it is. So it's homecoming, right? And y'all know what it's like at homecoming, especially if you went to a HBCU, you know, it's all about coming back home. You have your honor classes, you have older students that come back, you have sororities and fraternities have their anniversaries of their lines and they come back and all kinds of stuff and it's just really a good time for everybody to just enjoy colonel teller says that he has students come back all the time thanking him for being the professor that he was but one particular student told him you are you are the reason why i don't like men in uniform you you were horrible to me and i had to drop out of college and it took me two years to get back to school so that wasn't such a great thing for uh, Colonel Taylor. And I oh, let me say this. I owe an apology because I thought that after the wedding episode, Jaleesa and um, Walter broke up. But they didn't. In this episode, they looked like they were still a couple. So I apologize. I felt like, but I know they do break up. But I felt like that was when they broke up. So I apologize. That wasn't what it was. Anyway. Now, Kim and Freddie are on their way down to D.C. for Freaknik. So here's a couple of things wrong with that. First of all, Freaknik never took place in D.C. Freaknik was in Atlanta. I know. I was at more than one. Two, Freaknik was in the spring, not in the fall. Homecoming happens in the fall. But it is what it is. Kim and Freddie are on their way down to Atlanta. I mean, on their way down to D.C. And um, Freddie is a little nervous because she's like, well, where are we staying? Who's going what, where? Kim is more like, let's make it happen. Like, it don't matter who's there, who's what. We're going to get there. We're going for the weekend. And it's going to be what it's going to be. Now, Whitley doesn't want her to go because Whitley is going to be in the parade. And she wants Kim to drive the truck because she's like, you know, you're the only person I can trust. And I don't really want other people driving me. So on their way out, Kim's dad calls. Ask her what she's doing for the weekend. She says, Dad, we're going down to homecoming. I mean, we're going down to D.C., and um, her father says, uh, no, I need you to be on campus. And she says, but dad, I don't, and she tries to argue with him. And he was like, listen, I said what I said. You gonna be, I need you to be in at Hillman. And that's that. But guess what Kim does? Oh, Kim goes anyway. So next thing you know, who comes showing up at the dorm? Kim's daddy. He said he was in Richmond at a, um, at a, um, a law enforcement, you know, symposium, and he was coming through to say hi to Kim. Now, he ain't tell Kim that, that that's why he wanted her to stay on campus, but at the end of the day, he told her to stay on campus, and she wasn't supposed to go, so, you know, but she went anyway. Uh, now, while all this is going on, we got Dwayne and Ron arguing over who brings the, the cutest women home. They're cleaning up the apartment. Ron is practicing his lines for how he gonna pick up women on campus, and Dwayne and them are arguing, and Dwayne is talking about the women he bring home is ugly. And Ron say, but you don't bring home no women at all. And they have that whole moment. You know, it was a nice little cute little sparring session, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and get them two out the way. We're going to go ahead and get that part of the story out the way. They end up both bringing women home. Now, Dwayne met the girl down to the pit. They was dancing, flirting all night. Dwayne ends up bringing her back. They on the couch kind of getting doop, doop, bloop, and a boo da boo da boo And then here come Ron with his woman. And they try to sit on the couch together and... They kissing on one end, and then and Dwayne says, "Listen, let me talk to you out on the out on the terrace, you know, the fire escape." They go out on the fire escape, and they get to arguing. Now, first of all, I know they loud. I could hear them; they were so loud. So I know them women that was inside of um, the the apartment could still hear them talking about who was cuter, who had the weave, who had the more makeup on, because they arguing with each other about how pretty or ugly their women are. They finally they flip a coin as to who gonna have to leave. Dwayne loses the coin flip, 
But when they go back inside the apartment, both the women are gone. Yeah, because they probably heard y'all arguing about who had more weave and who had on more makeup, okay? Out of left too. So we going to got them out the way. Now, um, back on campus, Whitley is now scrambling because Kim is not on campus. But of course, Whitley, get, listen, Whitley gets the award for this one. She gets the award for roommate of the year. First of all, she goes upstairs and says, oh, I think Kim is upstairs. Let me go get her because, of course, Daddy can't go upstairs. Kim, she goes upstairs. She tries to call Kim at the number that Kim left. Remember, this before cell phones and stuff. So she's calling the hotel, leaving messages for Kim, telling Kim to get her butt back to school because her daddy is here looking for her. Then the parade, she says, well, listen, I know Kim is going to the game. Here's a ticket. You come on. You go to the game. You'll probably find her there. I'm going to be in the parade. I'm Venus de Milo, you know, all of that. This the episode where baby, her her car ran into the goalpost and poor, Kim, uh, poor uh, Whitley was thrown from the car and she had all this dirt on her Venus de Milo outfit, honey. Um, of course, Kim wasn't at the park, at the game. So after the game, Whitley says, oh, well, you know what? Um, I know she was here. Because her sweatshirt is here, and she wore this sweatshirt to the game. Now, Daddy must have got a pass to come upstairs, because Daddy is up in the dorm room, and he is starting to believe that Whitley is, is giving him the runaround. Like, he, you know, he like, okay, it's, it's, something don't smell, something sour in this milk over here. So, Kim, I mean, I keep saying Kim. So, Whitley, um, by this time, Whitley had talked to Kim and told Kim, get your butt back here, your father is here, and I'm going to stall him for as long as I can. So then he takes her all around. I mean, she takes him all around campus. She takes him here. She takes him to the pit. She takes him there. She takes him there. And finally, he says, listen, she's not here, right? Like, come on, Whitley. You trying. You you, you did your best. But my, my daughter, she went to D.C., didn't she? After I told her not to. And Whitley tried. You know, she tried. Um, but he finally got it out of her because, listen, she held on as long as she could. I had to give Whitley credit. She held on as long as she could, baby. But he, she finally had to confess what happened. If she had just been able to hold out another 15 minutes, 15 minutes, because who come running in the door is Kim and Freddie, honey. They done booked it back. But by this time, her daddy know. And her and her daddy have it out in the middle of the lobby. And that's when I said Jaleesa and Walter came in and they tried to smooth it over. And basically he respectfully told them, listen, I got this. This is my daughter. I got it handled. And they was like, deuces. Um, and he lets her know, listen, at the end of the day, I'm your father. And I gave you a directive. And Kim tries to let him know, listen, dad, I'm a sophomore in college. I'm not a kid anymore. Like, I'm perfectly able to make these decisions. He said, you had a perfectly good homecoming on your own campus. I don't understand why you felt the need to go anywhere. And she was like, I did the homecoming last year. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to go somewhere different. Um, and he lets her know, he says, listen, at the end of the day, either you're going to, either I'm going to have to be able to trust you that you are going to live by the rules that me and your mother have given you, or you're going to go home and go to Ohio state. Like it's just, that's, it's just that simple. And he tells her, and hey, go upstairs and change your clothes because we're going to dinner. So she gets back from dinner. And, you know, Whitley is like, so, you know, how was it? And she said, basically, my father ripped me a new one. You know, I'm, I got to go home for Christmas. I got to go home for spring break. I got to go home for the summer. And when I am home, I'm going to be on punishment. I ain't going to better do nothing. And Whitley says, you know what? Your father cares about you. And honestly, I know right now it may not seem like it, but that really is a good thing. You know, at the end of the day, I had two parents that kept me with a nanny, and the only way I could get the attention was by setting the nanny on fire. And Willie was like, you didn't. I mean, Kim was like, you didn't really set the nanny on fire. Willie was like, mm, just her clothes. But they had a conversation about, you know, different parenting. And, you know, of course, Kim wishes that she had parents that didn't smother her as much. Whitley wishes that she had parents that sort of did smother her a little bit. But I think both of them realized that, you know, Maybe somewhere in the middle is probably the best situation. But Kim, of course, is really struggling with that whole, I need my father. She said, my brothers could drive to Peru and it's fine as long as they put gas in the car. But for me, you know, I can't go down the street to the store by myself. Um, and I think that is, I know when I went to college, that was something that my mom and I struggled with. 
you know, when I would come home for summers and for breaks, it was like, I'm not that same person that left. And, you know, when you're on campus, you do have a certain level of freedom, especially when you don't even live in the state. You know, you have a certain level of freedom and that when you come home, it's like, okay, well, you want me to still be that same person. So it's definitely growing pains um, between, and, and Kim's father is played by Shaft, you know, Richard Roundtree. Shouts out to him. So, yeah, that was pretty much the episode, you guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Uh, drop it in the comments.